Despite the dubs being down 9 points with just over 5 minutes left, as well as Steph getting ejected for throwing his mouthpiece like back in 2016's finals, <laughs> nonetheless, Klay Thompson's clutch triple and Jordan Poole's game winner off a perfectly drawn up sideline out of bounds sealed it. Before his ejection, even though Memphis was up big in the clutch, it felt like Curry simply wasn't gonna let them lose this one. When he threw his mouthpiece, while he's going to act surprised about the ejection, Steph definitely knew what would happen if he threw it, but sending the message which ended up being fully interpreted by Jordan was well worth getting tossed for the final few minutes. Sweep in the first half of the most heated rivalry in basketball, taking a 2-0 season series lead against Memphis. It was the first of many game winners with under 10 seconds left for Michigan product Jordan Poole. However, there's no time for the dubs to let their head down, they have to keep their edge, because once they lose that edge, similarly to the 21-22 Boston Celtics, the Warriors then become very turnover prone and generally beatable. To tell you the truth, this isn't the flawless Warriors team from last year with perfectly suited complementary guys like GP2, Otto, and Nemi. This current Warriors group will evidently have to scratch and claw minute 1 through 48 for everything they get if they want a shot at getting even close to where they were last year. Nothing will come pretty in 2023 for the Bay Area's ball club, but on Warriors ground anything is possible, especially when you have the best player in the world and his clone. Here's how the Warriors' insanity continues. Right quick, just 11.5% of you watching are subscribed though, so please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a like for the YouTube algorithm, and please follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Your support is greatly appreciated, so thanks for supporting my platform to the fullest extent. Mouthpiece altercation is next, but with the Warriors forced to think on the fly after the ball was knocked out with 2.6 seconds left with a chance to win the game, credit to Steve Kerr for running this reject double screen action. Also credit Draymond for completely fooling Desmond Bain by motioning to JP and Lamb as if the double screen's going to be for Thompson. Even though JP's cut is late, that initial motioning from Green still has Williams frozen right here and Jordan springs off him for the game winner. Now for the play everyone's talking about though, DiVincenzo does a great job to keep possession alive after the Thompson midi doesn't fall, Clay grabs the loose ball and instinctively kicks it out to Poole, you can see Steph right next to him pleading to him give me the ball with the Warriors up just 2 and 120 left. Jordan instead says Kobe, immediately Steph's mind goes to who does this kid think he is, chucks his mouthpiece for his third career mouthpiece ejection. Thankfully, this seeming to be initial game winner from Clay, and the execution I just broke down from that picture perfect baseline inbounds, handed Memphis their fourth consecutive L since the Shannon Sharp altercation in LA. And if you thought there was going to be any beef whatsoever between those two after Steph got himself tossed because of a bad look from Poole, JP jokingly chucking his own mouthpiece at Steph in the tunnel displayed the message had been fully absorbed. Kudos to Jordan for taking that on the chin, like a lot of young players wouldn't. And given the type of person Poole is, this recent altercation is actually ideal for the Warriors' chemistry, because Steph carrying like it's my career mode in terms of him getting the rock quite literally whenever he calls for it, let's face it, is the only thing that's going to give the Dubs a chance at getting back to the promised land. Yes, they had a nice five-game winning streak without him, but I'm talking long-term. Speaking on JP throwing his mouthpiece at him, here was Steph's reaction. It's like one of those, like, too soon jokes. <laughs> Before the ejection in the fourth quarter, Steph had 10 points and in the final period total, combined with Jordan Poole and Klay Thompson for 31 points. Andrew Wiggins was sick and didn't play this one, but it's going to be scary once the all-star starter from last year finds his flow. But it's quite frankly been a struggle for Maple Jordan when he has played since returning from that adductor injury which kept him out 15 games, as the Canadian's shot has been flat in the games he has suited up since initially returning. I hope my guy Wiggs is feeling better first and foremost, because lest we forget, his defensive clamps on the wing in 2022's playoffs were crucial, not to mention, man's the team's second best shot creator when he's at his best. Once the former number one pick finds his comfort zone mentally and physically, it's going to be a problem for other teams in the West to take down Golden State four times out of seven, but that's easier said than done. Andrew's got to get healthy, and when he is right, I'd like to see him be more engaged in terms of his energy level and communication, just one of many challenges I've laid out to the players and coaches of this Warrior team over my last two vids on them. One of the critiques I made was, in addition to Andrew not being right since returning, I said Steph 
wasn't in the same condition that he was from his last injury return in the 2022 playoffs. That could still very well be the case, as it's only been one game, but Steph evidently seemed ramped up following that take, as I hadn't seen that type of curry down the stretch in a long time. When he's asserting his will on the game like LeBron did to my raps all throughout the 2010s in terms of Steph controlling the game with his body language, poise, and most importantly, creation off the dribble, of course, mixing up downhill ravages with perimeter saucing ups, then no one can beat the dubs. The hype needs to stop, quite frankly, though, because Denver's 17-3 in their last 20, they deserve respect, and while the Warriors did beat them in last year's first round, the Nuggets are different this season, with the Blue Arrow Jamal Murray back, among many other factors. As of this recording, despite the wild roller coaster of a journey that they'd label as not coming close to living up to expectations, you may be shocked to hear that with the Pelicans taking their sixth straight loss last night, the Warriors are now less than just two games of home court advantage in the playoffs. The Western Conference is top heavy with Denver and Memphis, but in terms of the depth of the conference, it's more wide open than ever before, a factor which will tremendously benefit an inconsistent, still putting it together dubs team who've slowly slowly but surely catapulted up the western hierarchy in lieu of them not coming close to playing their best basketball. That should give you real hope if you're in Dubs Nation that is, but as I mentioned in my last Warriors video, this team is still not at a championship level. Then again, I did also mention they may be better than their record given all the leads they've blown. Going back to the story of the night, and for some reason, every one of Curry's career ejections have been mouthpiece related, which goes back to my point about him knowing exactly what he was doing by tossing it. Because when Steph chucks his beloved mouthpiece, that's when you know hell has officially broken loose. You have to praise the heart that the Warriors played with when they needed to, because for a large chunk of the game against Brooklyn, they didn't seem to have it. While it was a good final few minutes, ultimately this performance is nothing to write home about, and to declare that this current roster is on the same level as Denver, I need to see a lot more. That said, a win against the second-seeded rivaled Grizz, of course on Rivals Week, is worth the slightest bit of celebration, but the last thing I'll reiterate is the edge needs to maintain itself. Other than that, what needs to repeat itself down the stretch of Wednesday's game against conflictingly my Toronto Raptors on Friday? What needs to keep up? By the way, don't know who I'm going to cheer for in that one because the dubs are my second team and I want Wembenyama, but I'd be good with whatever. Two shoutouts for my last upload and this one next time. Have a good one.